welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at PAX Unplugged 2019, and I'm here with Eric from Jap Anime Games. Hi, Eric. Hi. How's it going here at PAX? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we've got some new games that we just uh, released here, well, that will be coming out in the next couple of months. Uh, we've got a new Robotech game that we've got here, a new game called Core Connection, and a really exciting thing is the new Cowboy Bebop game. Awesome. I love Cowboy Bebop, the anime. I originally watched it way long time ago. I must yeah. have been in middle school or high school or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this is actually what first got me into anime uh, about 20 years ago. So it's pretty exciting to finally work on a license like this that I personally have a, a, a real attachment to. So we've, we've had several that I love, but this is, this is pretty personally exciting for me. So what type of game is uh, Cowboy Bebop, and uh, what kind of games is it similar to in your collection? Well, it is similar to several in that it is yet another deck builder, okay. but yeah. uh, it's got some pretty cool aspects to it where it's actually got more of a board game that goes along with it. Um, and I'll open up the game and show you somewhat of the parts that come inside. Yeah, it looks like it's actually got some miniatures in it, yeah. which is exciting and a little bit different from what you guys usually do, right. which is great. So, woo! inside you'll see the Guide for Bounty Hunters, which is the rule book, of course. I love that, Guide for Bounty Hunters. It's a little yeah. way to make it a little fun and more thematic. Uh, a whole lot of punch board tokens, and uh, there's standees right here for the characters, but we've also got the minis. Minis! Which turned out really nicely. By the way, this is the first copy that we've got, so that's why we're just kind of showing it off right here. So, we've got... Uh, this Ed and Einstein. Ed and Ein are together. That's a great little figure right there. And we've got Faye Valentine and Spike. All oh, these great yeah. characters. And Vicious is in there as well. So we've got the Bebop right here. And then there's different planets on the, in the game as well. So this is the board aspect to it. But then also, each player has their own character board. What really cool about these two is you have the inserts here, insets. Yes. Where you're going to be placing little uh, tokens, maybe? Or well, you oh, get these okay. cubes. These are fuel cubes. And so they're in this double thick uh, space here, double thick cardboard. And you need to track this. As you run out of fuel, you will not be able to move to different planets. So just like in the anime, where the characters are always trying to get fuel and keep moving, you need to do that in the game as well. Then during the game, you're going to have a different bounty that comes out on the different planets. And so you'll have to be able to fly on the Bebop over to different planets to pick up the bounties. There's a lot of action cards and things to add to the game while you're playing through it with many different characters from the game. And then are these the fuel you need? Yeah, together? and that's part of the fuel as well. And uh, here we've got Ed, <laughs> crazy Ed. And then somewhere in here, we've got the bounty cards as well. There we go. There's Vicious. And uh, so this is a separate deck on the back, you'll see, with a different bounty that'll show up on different planets. So as you flip them over, they fit in this slot right here. And so you need to go uh, collect the bounty from that character and bring them back. So it's uh, everybody's trying to do the same theme. Uh, they've got the same goals, but you're not playing as a co-op game. You're just trying to get the most cash, basically, by, by collecting the most bounty. So it is competitive. Yes, that way. yes. Okay. Like a little bounty uh, challenge for everyone. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is really uh, a very cool thing. This is the first time we've shown it anywhere. Uh, we're planning on releasing it in March of next year. Um, it'll be our big push at Gamma next year. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Eric. Uh, anything else you want to say about where people can go online to find out more? Uh, JapanimeGames.com. Uh, we'll have some announcements about it very soon. Probably be doing some pre-orders. We've got some promo cards we'll be throwing in with that. Uh, but uh, we'll be doing a big announcement fairly soon. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, and have a great PAX Unplug. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's it, and see you guys next time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. We're here at PAX Unplugged and I'm Callie 
here with Tony from CGE Games, Czech Games. Hi, Tony. How's it going? Hey, it's going great. Thanks for coming by the booth, and or actually the room, and yeah. having some fun. You have a huge room full of a bunch of people playing a bunch of different games. What kind of games are they playing? Uh, primarily here, what we're demoing is Letter Jam, which debuted at Gen Con, and then Sanctum, our upcoming title that's going to be hitting this February. Ooh, so we saw a little bit about Letter Jam at Gen Con, but tell us more about Sanctum. Okay, so Sanctum is a game designed by Philip Naduke. Comes in this big box. We're having a great time. But it is the designer also of, uh, of Adrenaline. So our title, Adrenaline, has was a featured uh, game that was kind of uh, inspired by first-person shooters. So... In the same line, Sanctum is inspired by ARPG hack and slash type titles uh, that featured demons and such of that nature too. <laughs> so <laughs> basically what we're doing is we are distilling that sort of experience, and he's done it in a great way, into a tabletop Euro game. Awesome. So what all do you get? Okay, you get? So, so generally speaking, we are heroes, and there are four different heroes in the box. There's the Huntress the Slayer, and then also the Outlaw and the Dancer. So you choose one That's of these. That's an unusual class. Yeah, <laughs> so, so you choose one of these four heroes, and what we're actually doing is we are all striving, not together, but competing against each other, to be the one that has the glory of defeating the Demon Lord. So we're all gonna be doing venturing through the lands, and there are six different boards, so we're just looking at a small snap, snapshot here, but there's uh, three boards, double-sided, so we're gonna venture across the lands, slaying the Demon Lord's minions, getting stronger, leveling up, picking up lots of different loot, and then... Very important in these types of games. <laughs> yeah, and then trying to defeat the Demon Lord. So the core of the game is really on your board. What you're doing is you are going to be killing demons to level up using this skill tree. So these are the player boards. Yes, these are the player awesome. boards. So Those everyone will have their own player board where they have the different skill tree. What you're doing is you're either moving, fighting, or resting on your turn. So when you move, you are advancing to the front of the pack, always the front. In a two-player game, for example, you're going to use fewer boards because you're going to hit more encounters as you travel across yeah, the land. Yeah. But as you move along, you then move, then you reveal demons based on where you are standing. It tells you based on here. So if you look at the board, it'll have little flags, and the flags have a number of horns on the top of the demon set. That's the easiest way. So if it has three horned demon, then it's a level three. If it's two horned, it's level two. One horn, level one. So you'll be spawning these demons as you move along. Then, after you spawn the demons, you get to take which demons you want onto your board to fight. Oh, you choose? So you choose. Okay. And this is where a lot of the decision making comes in. Because the demons themselves, you're choosing the difficulty of the demon, you're choosing the color of the demon, and you're also choosing based on the little icon in the top left. Is that the loot type? What type of loot you're going to get. So, and there's even a little bit of a hate drafting type mechanic put in where you could be choosing demons just so that your opponents don't get them. Like someone's missing a helmet. I'm going to take all the helmets. I want all me. the helmets, even though I might not need one. Um, or looking at it, in this case, there's only two red demons and only two green demons. I might purposefully draft this hard demon that's green, knowing that there's no the next card isn't going to be a green demon. So the next player won't be able to choose a green demon because this is what will come out. And if they choose this one, they're only going to gain one green experience versus gaining three green experience points. So you, there's a lot of different decision making just based on which cards you're going to choose on your turn. Well, and you have to also be able to defeat those demons, right? Yes. So <laughs> that comes in with the fight aspect. Uh, so I move, I take the demons. That would be my whole turn. Yeah. The next thing I could do when it's my turn next time is fight. So when I'm fighting, I'd roll my dice. And I'm actually trying to, <laughs> that's a horrible oh. roll, because I'm trying to match the actual dice on the, the card. Now, if it was just dice chucking, that would be very random. And that's not really what we do. Yeah. So what we're actually doing is you have on your board, you have ways to mitigate the luck. 
So you can use your focus to add modifiers that then you can use to change your dice rolls. So like I can use this focus with the plus, minus one to change that to a five, but and this one to plus two Don't to do a three. But in this case, I, there's no way I could do, modify all three dice to make it match. Especially because this is a level three demon and I'm not leveled up at all. This actually won't happen in the game. But so let's say I can't. When you can't do it, they're gonna attack you based on the number of uh, blood marks on the very bottom of the card. So I'm taking four damage oh, no. unless I can defend against it. At this point, I could only defend against two, so I'd take two damage. And health in this game is not only uh, your life, which if it goes down to zero, you lose and you're eliminated, but it's also your victory points. Oh, so the okay. victor of the game is the person at the very end who has defeated the Demon Lord and has the most health remaining. You have to do both. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a way, if everyone loses, no one really wins, but you, uh, we do have rules that say in that situation, the person who's achieved the most is the victor. But you you're the lost. worst. You're the best of the worst. <laughs> yeah, you're the, be you're the best loser. So, <laughs> but basically after that, if you defeat the demon, you gain experience. That is, uh, so basically you're moving these gems, which indicate your different abilities. So as you move gems off of different cards, you'd gain that ability by locking it into your slots or into these side slots. So if I move the gems, for example, from the bottom, I'm unlocking that level three ability, but I'm not really gaining any gems. And the gems are actually a resource as well. So let's say I move these three because I get three gems. I unlock my sharpshooter ability, which is slotted over here. But then I also have unlocked three gems into my dice pool, or into my gem pool. And that's interesting because after you gain experience, you gain the loot there of that go. demon. Okay. So and the helmet. <laughs> and I got this nice hat that, but unfortunately, it takes three gems to equip. But I did get those three gems from. Can you save the level. up for it? So you can't save up. Okay. But like basically, over time, you're gonna level up and you're gonna get all these gems. And then when you rest, you're restoring all of your used resources and equipping items. So you just sock it in the gems into the place, and then you continue progressing. So like basically, you're trying to kill all the demons get all this awesome loot that they drop, equip it onto yourself that makes you stronger, give you more modifiers, and continue along the way until you reach the final test, which is the Demon Lord. And the Demon Lord uh, is a really difficult battle. So on average, a four player game, two people will die in the final battle. <laughs> so once you get to that point, people are gonna be falling like flies, but depending on the quality of the equipment that they, they chose to equip. So, yeah, but that's kind of the game in a, a nutshell. You're just, you go through, you, you're continuing to do the same thing. You're moving, you're fighting, you're resting, you're killing the demons, getting the loot, equipping it, rinse and repeat until you're finally getting to a point where you're like, okay, now let's fight the demon lord and see who wins. Cool. Well, if people want to learn more about Sanctum, where can they go online, or okay. when is it coming out? So it's coming out in February. Um, we have been demoing it here at shows, so a lot of content's going up on online. But also, uh, checkgames.com, there is a page about Sanctum that you can check out and uh, get more information. Awesome. Anything else you want to say to the audience about uh, just yeah, you know what you guys are doing? No, we, we've been having a lot of fun with this. Uh, we appreciate our fandom and everybody that comes to watch our games. And we're, we're really excited about this one. So, so check it out. Well, thank you so much for sharing. It's been a pleasure. Actually, there's a lot more involved in this game than I thought at first. Yes, this yes. Is really cool. it's, this is a medium weight <laughs> yeah. Euro hidden behind the hack and accessible. slash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, cool. so you get the cool minis, but then you also get a meaty like uh -huh. Euro experience. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tony. And uh, have a good one. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at PAX Unplugged, 
with Rachel from Resident Games. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm great, and how's it going here at PAX? It's going wonderful. I mean, we've been pretty swamped all day. We have a, a smaller booth this year, but it's nice because you get to pack everyone in here, and it's nice and cozy. Um, I love it, yeah. Yeah, it looks really hopping. So what games are you guys showing off today? So we're showing Visitor in Blackwood Grove, which came out last year, which we kickstarted, and we're also showing Mechanica, which is what we're kickstarting right now. We're doing fulfillment and hoping to hit uh, retail next month. Yeah, so this is Mechanica. Awesome, we just got this game and I'm so excited to play and now I'm even more excited to get to see a little bit about it before we play it. Yeah. So tell us a little, what's the base overall idea of the game? So Mechanica is a game about manufacturing these adorable little vacuum robots. So we have little minis here that we're very proud of. Um, so Mechanica is the first all AI run company. However, pesky laws don't allow AI to produce other AI. So every player at the table is a human employee who has been hired to help Mechanica increase their efficiency and make more tidy bots. So there's three models. There is the basic model, the plus model, and the deluxe model of bots. And the overall mechanic of the game is that it is a puzzle laying engine builder. So these are all, whoop, I dropped it. These are all little improvements that you can put in your factory to upgrade your bots and duplicate them, all sorts of fun stuff. So if you were to buy this one, you snap it into your factory, your personal factory floor right there. And then any bot that goes into it gets duplicated into two of them. So as you can see, like they start to layer onto each other and you've got all sorts of crazy engine building stuff that happens. And then you're kind of limited by what you can add. Yes, back. yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you had, as an example, if you started with an upgrader here, and then you snapped in a duplicator, a white bot would go into your upgrader and turn into an orange bot, which is more expensive. And then the orange bot would go into your duplicator and become two orange bots. So you can kind of see how it layers on top of each other. Um, a little bit of engine building there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one of my favorite parts about the game is that it's actually mostly play in the box. All these pieces that you can buy are in this middle section right here. The prices are listed next to them. If you choose not to buy it, you end up rotating the shop wheel and everything becomes cheaper. If no one wants this sad little upgrader, it'll eventually get all the way to the end and drop into the box. It gets recycled. It gets recycled. We're all about, we're an AI company, but we're also about environmentalism and recycling our parts. Um, so that's the quick idea of it. Um, yeah. That's really cool. And it also comes with some cards. Yes. So. Yeah. So, um, Mostly you want to send your bots down the line into your trucks to sell them out to the masses and make a lot of money. However, Mechanica's always looking to improve our robotic technology. And instead of selling your robots for face value whoop, when they're in your trucks, <laughs> throwing them everywhere, um, you can also turn them in to make blueprints. Um, so if you had four for, um, orange bots in your trucks, let's do this. So say you had two oranges and two whites, right? You could sell that for a face value, or you could turn them in to complete this blueprint right here. This is more money than they would be for the face value. However, they get put in your individual little vault. Vault money is not money that you can use to buy improvements, but it's scored at the end of the game. So you have to manage how much money you have in hand because that allows you to buy more improvements, but also vault money can sometimes be more valuable at the end of the game. So it's a lot of like thinking ahead and that kind of stuff. So whoever has the most money at the end of the game yeah. wins? Yes, that's the idea. Um, also, every improvement does have a little number at the top, so we do reward people for making more complicated factories. So like at the end of the game, you score up all your money in your vault, in your hand, and on your improvements. Awesome. So if people want to learn more about Mechanica, where should they go online? Resonim.com. R-E-S-O-Y-N-M. Resonim.com. Um, you can see all of our games there. Uh, we are taking, I think you can still pre-order it on Amazon right now if you'd like, or buy it in stores in January. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say about what uh, Resonim is doing? Um, we're doing a lot of social media stuff. We actually just started a Twitch channel, so check us out there where we get to hang out with our fans and play games together. That kind of stuff is really fun. It, we're trying to do more community outreach, so definitely check us out at twitch.tv slash resonim. Good, yeah, it's very important to be engaged with yeah. the community and yeah. build that up. We're, we're, that's something we're really trying to push for right now, and Twitch is a really great platform to do that on because you get live interaction with your fans, which is just awesome, and we love it. So yeah, check us out. Awesome, so if you're interested, join the community. Uh, this has been Callie and Rachel at PAX Plus. Thank you guys, and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at PAX Unplugged with Gatekeeper Games, the maker of Half These Dice. Hello, John. Hi, how are you? Good. I am doing great. And how is it going here at PAX? Uh, it is awesome. PAX is growing so quickly. It's completely insane. Um, I have a buddy here volunteering with me. Uh, it's his first time here at PAX. 
and he heard it was it's only it, uh, PAX's third year, and he's like, um, this in th yeah, yes, yeah, this yeah. in three years. It's amazing. It's, it's our first year here too, so it's exciting yeah, to it's be amazing. here all the way from California. You know how much it's grown. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> because we don't ever see each other in California, yeah. so we have to meet up at conventions in other states. And awesome, you have this huge island booth showing off lots of dice. What do you have that you're selling here today? So we have our whole line. We have our original halvesies. We have our new halvesies. Um, we have our supernova, which is uh, three layers, but the middle layer is transparent, yeah. which is super freaking cool because you can see through the dice. We've always promised exactly zero air bubbles in our dice, Woo! and now we can prove it. We now have neutron dice where the top and the bottom are transparent. Mm -hmm. Okay, Those are super cool. Um, and then we have our reality shards, which are five layer dice um, with a, uh, I like poetry, so it's an A, B, C, be a color scheme so it's like an inverted gradient thing um, which is super cool and then we have our new uh, dice keeps it's uh, we're calling them the new standard in dice storage one dice uh, one case to hold them all is what we like to call them all right uh, gatekeeper game now has dice keeps yep where dice you keeps. can keeper your dice exactly <laughs> so it's got a hinged base with a snap closure lid, so you don't lose your base or your dice in your backpack, okay? Um, it holds a seven die set, uh, an 11 die set, 12 D6, 36 mini D6, or epic scale minis all in the same case. Um, it could be used as tabletop terrain because it's got the nice nest on top. You can put your D20 on top and flick it off to roll. Uh -huh. um, or a miniature. And, <laughs> exactly. So, and it stacks for vertical storage. We can stack them super high. Um, they've been stress tested to 390 pounds standing on top of it. Why? <laughs> because. <laughs> Simply because it's awesome. Like, you can make your case that breaks or you can make your case that can hold a 400 pound man. Well, that's awesome. Good to know that they won't be damaged in shipping and you're exactly. going to save a lot that way. Exactly. And they look great. You, you know then you have the gatekeeper game dice then when you're showing off these. <laughs> yep. So I, on like a businessy practical level, like you can tell how much a person cares about the product if the actual packaging is ridiculously awesome. <laughs> so I just if I can level something up, I will. Um, it's about making your story and being part of your story making your story more exciting so you can integrate into your story better. And now even the dice case is actually useful. So Awesome. So where can people go if they want to learn more about the Have These Dice and get some for themselves? Uh, GatekeeperGaming.com. That's GatekeeperGaming.com. Um, uh, you go to HaveThesDice.com, it should redirect you as well. Um, and uh, that's all the stuff. Um, email me. I like chatting. Social media, <laughs> all the things. You'll find us. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing. Anything else you want to say to the board game audience and RPG audience? Uh, yeah. Thank you for letting me part be. Thank you for letting me be part of your story. Awesome. Well, that's it. I'm Callie here at Pax Unplugged. Thank you guys, and see you guys next time. Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at PAX Unplugged with Chris from Dap Anime Games. Hi, Chris. Sorry, I'm sorry. Eric, I just said your name too. Eric. I don't know. Okay, we start over. It's like right here. No, no. You're like, oh, you want me to test? Test, test. Okay. Test, test.